Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is you're joining me for this video, thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is going to be the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya Flex Non-Flex Editions. <laughs> Zone, the good, the bad, the ugly, and high noon on this pen. I'm going to go over some background information, starting with the man who is the owner and creator of Fountain Pen Revolution. His name is Kevin Thiemann. He was living overseas in India until 2009 when he said to himself, Self, I suck at handwriting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to improve my handwriting and I'm going to do what any person should do. Pick myself an inexpensive fountain pen. He did so. Fell in love with it instantly infected with the fountain pen virus. Good for you, Kevin. It was while he was in India, some of his buddies who were not in India said, pick up some fountain pens. What he does is he goes and he searches out fountain pen makers in India. Turns out, a lot more people wanted fountain pens made from India. So he made some deals with these Indian manufacturers, imported lots of those pens, and began selling them. Such a great story. What's even more awesome is not only Kevin, infector and infected and carrier of the fountain pen virus, but so are the members of his family, all of which write with fountain pens, read and write in cursive. Despite modern vaccines against handwriting, cursive, script, Kevin perseveres in infecting as many people as he possibly can with the fountain pen virus. He does so today from his home. Keep up the good fight, Kevin. Fountain Pen Revolution imports and sells brands such as Fountain Pen Revolution, Airmail, Guider, Camlin, all in a different range of models and materials, including Ebonite. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. Let's take a quick look at our nib. Our nib is a 5.5 stainless steel nib, branded Fountain Pen Revolution. This one is an extra fine, it is non-flexible. And this one here is flexible. Notice how the slit between the tines goes all the way down further than the regular one. The feed is an ebonite feed. You commonly see these in other Indian made pens such as Noodler's pens. Let's talk about the cap. The finial is assembled using threads. The finial is also fixed to the threads of the body using what looks like an adhesive such as epoxy. The cap assembly is screwed on trapping the clip which is also a single piece. It has a long triangular design and it comes to the end of the clip with a rather odd bulb shape Take a look underneath the clip. What it looks like is a weird bug-like claw hand. On the red version that I have here, it seems as though the bulb of the clip is more closed up, looking more normal and traditional. The center band, rather plain and simple center band that just goes around the bottom part of the cap, and it just reads FPR. And once again, there's another variation with the red version. There is no branding on the center band. It is simply plain and unadorned. Take a look at the threads at the underside of the cap. These screw onto threads of the body, both of which are acrylic. The grip section is a tapered grip section that comes to a nice flare, then cuts straight off at the top. Let's take a look at the threads of the grip section. It has a two-step thread system. What you're gonna have are the threads that screw into the body of the pen. And just after the threads of the grip section, you're gonna have an O-ring. This O-ring is here to safeguard against possible leaks. After the O-ring, you have additional threads, and these threads are for the attachment of the included ink converter. This ink converter is similar to a syringe. So your standard crack abusing crackhead should be able to use this fountain pen with no problems. The converter rod is a piece of plastic connected to the plunger inside the converter. At the back end of the plunger rod is a little grip. This grip is unscrewable. The converter holds about three quarters of a milliliter of ink. This also is an eye-droppable pen. Eye dropped, it holds a whopping five milliliters of ink. The bottom of the pen is flat with a slight point at the end. Take a look at the pen body. There is no branding. The entire pen is made of acrylic. It has the exact same shape as a Noodler's acrylic Conrad. It did not come in a box. It didn't come in a clamshell case. All it came in was this padded envelope and styrofoam paper. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. Now let me talk about the nib as I usually like to do. Pulling this pen right out of the package, I was rather shocked. I didn't actually believe that a steel nib could be any good or any better than the current steel nibs out there on the market, such as Noodler's pens. So I had just simply assumed that the nibs that were being provided with the pens are the same nibs that come with the Noodler's pens, just branded differently. However, I was wrong. The specifications for each nib is entirely different. The nibs on the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya, they are much springier, easier to flex, there was no tinkering, there was no adjusting, it worked right out of the box. I would say that the grip strength required to use a Noodler's pen is on par with that of a 14-year-old adolescent male with an unlimited access to adult films, whereas the Fountain Pen Revolution is more on par with a flex nib fountain pen that's designed to flex and write. My Conklin Duraflex straight out of the box would not write. It had baby's bottom, it hard started, it ink starved, I had to provide my Conklin Durograph with more adjusting than the world's busiest chiropractor. The Conklin Durograph cost $60, whereas the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya only cost $33, 
however, outperforms the Conklin Durograph by tenfold. Now, obviously, it's not fair to compare a stainless steel Himalaya to that of a full flex custom 14 karat gold nib made by Linda Kennedy at Independence. Nothing comes into comparison with this nib. However, I want to just show you the differences in regard to line variation, but it's still rather the most satisfying steel nib that I've used with flex. Now this is the non-flex Himalaya 5.5 stainless steel nib that's an extra fine. This makes for a very good everyday rider. It has a moderate amount of feedback, is well tuned and adjusted and smooth. It's already heat set as is the flex nib. It's a little bit on the dry side despite having an ebonite feed. However, that can actually be adjusted based on your own tastes. If you look on YouTube to official fountain pen revolution videos that teach you how to do the modifications on your own should you so choose. And it is to my understanding that every nib and feed is personally heat set by Kevin himself and he additionally ensures that every nib is tuned and adjusted before it gets into the end user's hands. I also love the look of the acrylics. The acrylics are very well polished, have a lot of depth and chatoyance. Particularly on the green. The green has a lot more depth and swirls and is a very interesting pattern, yet at the same time has a metallic quality to it that makes it very eye-catching. The threading is really nice between the cap and the body. Threading and unthreading the pen is very smooth and very pleasant. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. Now the cost of a Himalaya acrylic fountain pen with a non-flex nib will run you $29, not including shipping. If you want a flex nib, it's $3 more. This puts the price range between $29 and $32. There's not much to say when it comes to the bad. So let me move on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. The acrylic on this pen is absolutely gorgeous. Quality control, that's a combination of the standards of the manufacturer as well as the inspection process and quality control check that's done inside of Kevin's home, make it for a very good product. By the time it gets to the end user's hands, any slight defect most likely would have been mitigated. So when it comes to the pen getting to you, there's very nominal things to talk about. The only thing I can say is when it comes to the clip, the clip is a very flimsy clip. It may look exactly the same as our Noodler's Conrad clip. However, in comparison, the clip is far thinner and it's more flimsy. So while screwing and unscrewing the pen, what you end up having is this chiming, jingling sound. What that does is it does add a little bit of a feeling of cheap to it. On the other hand, the pen was cheap. It was not expensive. So it's something I can definitely live with. Lastly, I question the longevity and the durability of the metal components of this pen. But like I said, $30, I'm sure that this pen will most likely outlast my expectations. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon. Decision-making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the fountain pen revolution, Himalaya? I have to say for a $30 pen that has a flex nib option or a standard non-flex nib option, this pen really impressed me. I have been hesitant to pull the trigger on fountain pen revolution pens for some time. Reason being, I assumed that I was purchasing from overseas. I have hesitations and I have doubts due to warranty issues. I'm glad that I did. This is a fountain pen that is perfect and very suitable and appropriate for newer users. It's also a very good infector of the fountain pen virus. Figure out what your buddy's favorite color is, you get them one of these, infect it. Give them a little sample, give this one to them for free, and then have them come back to you to talk to you about more options when they're interested. So in sum and substance, pull the trigger on this pen. I think you'll love it, whether it be the flex nib option or the non-flex nib option, especially if you love acrylic turned pens. That was my review on the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya. Thanks again for joining me. Be well, be safe.